One of the most common mistakes in the design of a hen house is not having enough ventilation. But you say, I bought a commercially made hen house. Surely it must have the right amount of ventilation. Sadly, no. Quite a few hen houses sold commercially haven't got adequate ventilation. In this video, I want to discuss the principles of hen house ventilation. Before we get into the details, firstly, let's consider why ventilation of the hen house is so important for chickens. We all like fresh air to breathe. Just like us, chickens get oxygen from the air that we breathe in and get rid of carbon dioxide in the breath that they breathe out. Typically, fresh air contains about 20% oxygen, and that's just about ideal for us and for chickens. If the oxygen concentration in a room gets below 16%, humans will feel exhausted and mentally confused. If the oxygen concentration in a chicken house gets below 16%, the chickens will become lethargic. Since chickens normally have a high respiration rate, they use up oxygen more quickly than humans. If the oxygen concentration in a room or a chicken house drops below 6%, both humans and chickens will die. So yeah, breathing fresh air is kind of important. A well-managed chicken house shouldn't smell. Without good ventilation and hygiene, your chicken house will smell of chicken poop, including methane and sulphur, both of which can be lethal at high levels. For the benefit of your neighbours, as well as your chickens, and to make your chicken house a pleasant place for you to be in and around, you want it to smell nice. The ideal temperature for adult chickens is between 20 and 23 degrees Celsius. That's 68 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Like us, they can stand a few degrees hotter than is ideal, but they don't cope well at all with heat. And chickens can't cool down by sweating. When they get hot, they need to pant out the excess heat in their breath. If the air in their chicken house is already hot, they can't get rid of that excess heat efficiently. If they are managing to get rid of some excess body heat on their breath, that is raising the temperature inside the chicken house, and so the chicken house gets even hotter. If it gets above 32 degrees Celsius, that's 90 degrees Fahrenheit, the chickens will suffer from heat stress, and that can be fatal. Dust in a chicken house consists of fine particles of straw or whatever you use for bedding, lots of bits of old feathers and dander, and dried up particles of poop and bacteria. All of that is irritating to chickens' delicate respiratory systems and makes the chickens vulnerable to airborne disease organisms. Good ventilation helps keep dust levels low and the air clear. Chickens don't sweat, but they do breathe, and their breath carries a lot of moisture into their environment. And chickens do poop a lot. And chicken poop consists of a lot of water. That's partly because chickens don't urinate. Their kidneys filter out wastewater, but then it's removed from the body in their poop rather than as pee. Even without any moisture coming into the chicken house from rain or leaks, there's a lot of moisture building up in a hen house. All that moisture encourages rot, rust, condensation, moulds, mildew and the growth of bacteria that make your chickens sick. You want to ventilate that moisture out of there. As droppings break down or bedding decomposes, ammonia is released into the air. If you've ever smelled ammonia, you know that even a small amount is pretty unpleasant. Ammonia irritates your eyes, sinuses, throat and respiratory tract and it's the same for chickens. And that irritation can quickly lead to respiratory damage, blindness, and eventually death. Not a pleasant way to go. If you can smell ammonia, the level is too high to be comfortable for your chickens. And remember to take a sniff near floor level. That's where the ammonia is coming from. 
and chickens are not tall, their noses are close to the floor. Except for immediately after you've cleaned the chicken house, there will always be a small amount of poop that is decomposing and releasing ammonia. You need air movement to move that ammonia out. So ventilation is very important. But I'm sure you've heard that drafts are bad. What's the difference between ventilation and drafts? There are several answers, but I like to say that ventilation moves air gently and generally vertically from floor to the roof right throughout the chicken house. A draft, on the other hand, is air blowing briskly and directly onto the chickens. In hot summer temperatures, a cooling breeze might actually be pleasant, but in cold weather, drafts will chill the chickens, leading to illness as well as increased food consumption. Drafts can come from air gaps in the construction of the chicken house walls, as well as poorly placed windows or doors. You can check out your chicken house for drafts by holding a lit match or candle where the chickens perch. If the flame is blown out, it's too drafty. If the flame wobbles a bit, that's probably about right. If the flame is perfectly steady, there might not be enough ventilation. Now, maybe you live in a really cold climate. Your tendency might be to try and keep your chicken house as warm as possible. Maybe insulate it and seal it up tight to prevent any drafts. But this could be a mistake. You do need ventilation, even in very cold climates. In fact, ventilation is especially important when the temperature is cold. And that's because of water vapour. Chickens have a high heat generating metabolism and their downy under feathers are excellent insulation as long as they are dry and unruffled. On cold nights, the chickens fluff up their feathers, huddle together to share body warmth and tuck their bare feet underneath them on the perch. Most chickens can withstand temperatures several degrees below freezing, as long as it's dry and there isn't a draft blowing on them. But that dryness is important. At low temperatures, the air can't hold so much water vapour and the relative humidity is higher than it would be for the same amount of water vapour at higher temperature. In cold weather, it's actually warm, moist air that's most dangerous because the warm air can carry more water vapour until it comes in contact with a cold surface where the water condenses and lowers the surface temperature even more. The chicken's downy feathers insulate them just like woolly gloves insulate and protect your hands from winter cold. But of course, wet feathers aren't such good insulation, just like your hands will get cold if your gloves get wet. Warm air needs to rise upwards and from there exit the chicken house, taking its load of moisture with it. So it makes sense that, especially for cold climates, ventilation of the chicken house should be high above the chicken's heads, well above perch level. The only part of the chicken not covered by feathers are its comb and wattles. If moisture condenses on their cold comb and wattles, the chicken will suffer frostbite. Frostbite is injury caused by the flesh freezing, and you can recognise it because the dead flesh turns black. Naturally enough, the breeds of chickens with large combs and wattles are especially prone to frostbite. Frostbite is painful for people and almost certainly painful for chickens too. If your chickens have frostbite, it's probably not because your chicken house is too cold, but because your chicken house is too damp and drafty, because you haven't cleaned out sources of moisture such as manure, because there are cold drafts blowing directly onto the chickens, and ventilation isn't adequate. Heat is far more dangerous to chickens than cold. When it's hot, Chickens will try to lower their body temperature by holding out their wings away from their body, 
spreading out from each other along the perch, assuming you allowed enough perch space for them to do that, and panting. A poorly ventilated chicken house will hold in the heat and can turn into an oven without you even realising it. It's a good idea to check the temperature inside your chicken house, maybe with a thermometer. The principles of high vents is the same, so hot, moist air will rise up and exit out of the chicken house. In addition, openings on opposite walls can create a cross flow and very effective ventilation. But unless the temperature is exceedingly high, there shouldn't be a draft blowing directly onto the chickens. Once again, dampness and humidity are the enemy. Higher humidity makes it feel hotter and difficult to breathe. Good airflow can keep the humidity down as well as the temperature. So in summary, in hot weather, ventilation serves the purpose of removing moisture, dust, ammonia, gases and smells, plus it also helps to lower the temperature. So now that you're convinced of the value of ventilation, exactly how much ventilation should a chicken house have? Plenty of people on the internet and books will give you an answer, but actually I believe the answer is it depends. Quite a lot of variables are involved. Is your climate hot or cold? Is the humidity high or low? Do the nights get cool? Is it windy? Is the chicken house located where it's sheltered from winds or exposed? Is it in shade or direct sun? How insulated is it? What's the roof made of? How high is the roof? The volume of air inside the chicken house matters much more than the floor area. Do you use bedding that is naturally moist, like deep litter? Or is the floor dry? How frequently do you remove the droppings? How crowded with chickens is the chicken house? What breed are the chickens? Chickens with a big comb and wattles don't do so well in cold, and the heavy breeds don't do so well in the heat. So that's all a bit complicated. To make it simpler, we could just say that except in very cold weather, or if it's drafty, you can almost never have too much ventilation. So the golden rules for ventilation are... Include as many large openings as possible. Make them adjustable so you can open or close them as the weather and wind direction indicates. Always include high vents to allow warm, moist air to exit. Unless your climate is very cold, include some cross ventilation. But avoid drafts blowing directly onto the chickens. Keep out the rain and other sources of water and keep the manure cleaned out. If you want to know whether your chicken house has enough ventilation, the simplest way is just to go inside your chicken house frequently. Do you see any condensation or frost? Is the bedding on the floor damp? Does it feel hot inside? Is it drafty? Can you smell ammonia? If it's none of these things, if it just feels comfortable to you and your chickens look happy, then you probably have it about right. In my recent videos, I've been sharing the process I've been going through to design and build my ultimate suburban chicken house. In the next one in the series, I'll look at how I applied these design principles to my situation to ensure that my hen house has adequate ventilation. Look out for that video coming soon. Bye for now.